This is Dr. Michelle Oakley of UConn Vet, and I'm talking to Jim and Florence on the forum. Hi, everyone. This is Jim Jackson. We have a very, very special guest. We're so excited. Florence, another amazing writer on her show. Boy, we're hot. Yes, we are. And she is an amazing writer. And I have to say, I have, like you know, we've done her book review, read her book, and absolutely love it. And so does everybody else out there. Five-star reviews and very, very talented first-time author. Yes, and why don't you introduce her? I'm very excited to talk to her, and she's got some personal things that are going to be very inspirational for people. Yes, this is one of our authors from the Jim Jacks Media Network, first-time author, the author of Atonement in the Heaven Sent series. This is J.L. Rothstein, and I just want to welcome her to the forum. See you again, Jen. Nice to talk to you again. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited to be talking to you both today. You are quite a writer. I've read about probably 20 reviews, and everybody says the same thing. That you excite them with your writing. You have great character development. People love the story. It's unique. When did you first get the writing bug? Is this something you've always had your whole life, or is it just something kind of later in life that hit you? No, you know, I always felt like it was there and I would always find reasons to write, whether I was in work writing uh, a policy manual or I was finding, you know, volunteering to write something outside of work. I always just had an ease with it. You know, I always felt very, very comfortable with it. But I finally decided, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. I'm actually, gonna, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it. I'm going to see what happens. And this has just been an amazing journey for coming from never having written a book before to, to where I'm standing today. So very, very exciting. I've spoken to so many people that say, boy, this is my first book. I've sold 10 copies in a year or 30 copies in a year. You are really doing well. And also what I love about you is people that are very well respected in the writing community, writers and reviewers are really loving your writing. Yeah, it's it's been so positive. It's just been an amazing experience to be out on social media with so many talented people and to be learning this whole process and and what it takes and and just I feel like every time I sit down to write something I'm learning something else and and it's just been fantastic I, I couldn't have asked for a better experience what was the inspiration for this book so I dreamt of one of the characters I had a dream of the character Gabriel who is the husband of, of the main character Genevieve who goes missing uh, for 40 earth years and I dreamt of him and he just kept saying to me in the dream, you, you have to tell my story. And I'm like, this is the craziest thing. And I, I would wake up and I would write little notes in this notebook that I had on the side of my bed. <laughs> and all of a sudden I had so many notes that I had multiple chapters. And so I sat down and I just started writing and I thought, you know what? I think, I think there's something here. So mm -hmm. I kept going. Now this is the first in a trilogy, right? Yes. So it's going to be, and, and the books are going to focus on um, the three sisters out of a nine sibling family. And each book focuses on one, one of those sisters. So the first book was Genevieve Omar's story, looking for her husband, Gabriel, who had been missing. That's amazing. And you're getting close to finishing this, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm about um, halfway. I've got about six weeks for a self-imposed deadline here. I've, I've lined up the editor that handled the first book. Uh, very excited about that because now I have some continuity and and uh, somebody who's familiar with the story and the characters already, so that's they don't have to start from scratch. And I've got to get that in our hands to start the editing the first week of October. That's amazing. Now, Jen, I know that you have this great website, jlrothstein.com, which everyone could definitely go get your book, but you also are a blogger. And you do these amazing blog posts. And I'm happy to say that I subscribe, and I always look forward to getting that email. Well, the other day I got an email saying that you had put out a new blog, and it was all about your life dealing with MS, which is something that you had never shared before, something very personal. But it was also very inspirational, and it was so positive. So can you tell us a little bit about about that, about the MS, and also what made you want to share that with all your friends on social media? Yeah, I mean, I, I really had been thinking about it, 
you know, I try to put something out weekly on the blog and I really have been thinking about, you know, when do I share this? When do I, it's, it's, it's a deeply personal thing. It's something that doesn't have anything to do with writing. It's a big part of me, but it's not the only part of me. And I decided, you know what, that's what I want to tell people. It, it, obviously it's a big deal whenever you're diagnosed with a chronic illness, but how many other people are out there with that chronic illness or maybe possibly just being diagnosed with MS that maybe feel like it's over for them, you know, that, that they can't have the life that they want to have now. And I thought, you know what, I've had this, it'll be, it's a nine, I've had it for 19 years. My official diagnosis was in 2001. And so I just passed my 19 year anniversary next year will be 20 years. And I thought, you know what, I can share the amazing life that I've had over the past 20 years, despite the fact that I have this, this chronic, chronic illness. So, you know, it was, it felt like the right time. And I sat down and I wrote it, and I printed it out and I handed it to my husband and I said, what do you think? And he said, wow, this is, this is pretty amazing. I, I think you need to put it out there. So it felt like the right time and it felt like it's something that people didn't know about me, but it's not the only thing about me. And so I wanted to share a little bit of that wisdom. And I think you don't get that wisdom without that 20 years. So if I can help somebody who's reading that or just starting out, I remember when I was diagnosed in 2001, you know, I was still in my late 20s. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, I'm climbing up the corporate ladder. I've got all this great stuff going on in my life. It's over. I remember having that distinct feeling, you know, it's not a death sentence. I wasn't dying, but I remember feeling like, oh my goodness, I, what about this career? I've spent all this time building. What's going to happen now? How could I hold all this together? And I just wonder how many other people are thinking that same thing. And, and I want to tell them, you can have that amazing career. You can do anything you want. You, you can go out there and write a book if you want. You, you, can do, you can do it all with your MS. It's such a triumphant story because, like you said, you can still do it all. I have a family member, which I shared with you, who has had MS for the past 30-something years. And she feels the same way you do. I mean, her life, again has, I mean, she's had her challenges, but it's never stopped her. So I absolutely love your story. I'm actually going to send her the link because she absolutely will love it. And I think that she definitely is like you. And when she shares that with people, she feels like she's inspiring people and helping others. And that's so important to her. So I'm definitely going to share your website with her in that link. But I also wanted to bring up, because again, you're not just a writer of this fabulous book. You have this amazing website, and you also started a YouTube channel, and you're doing, again, a very giving, supportive thing to your fellow authors. So why don't you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, I started uh, a couple weeks ago. I had this idea that they used to be this segment that I saw years ago that was called the five-minute interview, and it was somebody that would record uh, these sessions with people and keep them under five minutes and just get right to like the meat of the subject matter. And I thought, what if I did something like that on video with these authors where I could promote my book and get myself out there, but at the same time, I could ask three questions of a fellow author or an artist, or um, I plan to have some musicians on there as well. So these other creative people, these amazing, talented people that I've met on social media, and I thought, what if I recorded this and tried to keep it, you know, somewhere around 10, 15 minutes, you know, there's been some that have been less, there's been some that have been a little bit more, but put it out there and, you know, get people to know a little bit more about me yeah. and a little bit more about them. So, so yeah, so I think I've got two videos out there and, and I've got another one coming this week. Wow. And That's also, awesome. and also what I love is your education is really also created an amazing foundation and congratulations on finishing that. That kind of brings you to a technical standpoint to a place that you're also can really flourish and be a good writer, especially writing a trilogy, which is challenging. But wow, congratulations on getting that upper degree. Yes, thank you. Now, what is in store? You're also doing online, you're doing Twitter, you've now started a YouTube page, your blog is going great. What are your immediate goals right now and what are your future goals? So for me right now, I think it's going to be very focused on finishing um, the second book and making sure that I adhere to those deadlines that I set up for myself. Um, and I think, you know, I've caught a little bit of this interview bug, if you will, mm -hmm. from, sure. talking to these, from talking to these authors. And I'm like, you know, I really love this. I love the interaction with people. I'm very much 
uh, an extrovert. I'm very much a people person. I love to mm -hmm. meet meet pe people. So it's really something I'd like to develop and, and figure out how I could do better and maybe reach a broader audience. That's fantastic. Yes. Uh, I know that so many people are interviewing and a lot of people, it's kind of a lost start. People are not, a lot of people aren't that good at it or they ask kind of strange questions or, or it's hard to find people, especially when it comes to authors to get really good reviews and to get really good uh, interviews. And I think that's something that definitely there's more people out there that would love to share their talents and their book. So that that's great. Now, what are you looking at in regards, you have grown so large and I believe the reason is because you are such a giving person online people love your infectious passion and your giving spirit you now have over 10,700 people you are just skyrocketing i remember when you were about 5,000 people ago and now that's just you know 10,000 was a big deal and now that's way you're way over that talk to people because i know a lot of writers have told me you need to be more selfish. You need to be selfish. You need to not give. You need to, I've been told almost daily by writers, people, you shouldn't give so much to, to other writers. You should have a basis to yourself. You should only give of yourself. What do you say to people that think that? You know, it's just such the opposite mindset of what I have. And personally, I have found, and even in my career, you know, in business, I found the same thing is that the more you interact, the more you give, the more you're getting back. And when you're a writer, if you think about it, you can't write really great, compelling stories and create amazing characters unless you've lived. And part of living is having these experiences and having these interactions with people. And I really feel that that's only going to make me better. And I think if people were listening and thinking, you know, I'm too afraid to do that, or I wouldn't know how to do that, or I should really just put only myself out there, you're not really getting much of a return on that. You know, once you've done that once or twice, people kind of know you and they're not sort of engaging or responding. So I really feel like as much as I am giving and I am giving time and I am promoting other people, I'm getting something for that in return as well. And that's sort of the way that I'm, I think about it is there's a mutual experience happening there. And I think that that can only make you better as a writer. Tell us something about you that we don't know about you already that you've talked about yourself online, but say something that we'd kind of be surprised to know about you? Well, I think up until I put the blog post, I think people would have been surprised that I had um, MS. Um, and I think people would also be surprised that I've had a very successful career of 20 years managing accounting departments for private companies. I think people would be surprised about that. I think people think that if you're an artist or a creative person, you, pr you really don't have that other side of your brain um, mm -hmm. type of thing. And, and I think people would be, you know, and the few people that I've, I've told that to are surprised about that. They're like, you're an accountant? And I'm like, I am an accountant. I think that is what, what has helped you, though, because you do, when you do things, you're very organized. You have that kind of accountant mentality, and then you have the artistic side also. So that's a rare combination. Now, what would you like to tell people that are just starting out? Maybe they're struggling. It's their first book. They've sold five copies in six months. What would you tell them? in regards to what they need to do? I mean, I think the biggest thing is that you just keep writing. I know that there's been lots of advice and there's lots of blogs and there's lots of books on writing, but one of my favorite pieces is from Neil Gaiman, who talks about stop looking at your sales, you know, and just keep writing and keep finishing. So mm -hmm. write, you know, st once you're done with your book, you put it out there and you move on to the next one and you finish it and you just keep going. And that if that every experience you have will make you a better writer, every time you sit down to write the next book, it'll be better than the one before. And that the whole journey of doing that is, is how you're going to be better and how the sales will eventually come. I think if you're hung up putting that book out there, if you're hung up looking at those sales, like I, I don't even check, I mean, maybe once a month I check the sales. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't even really look there. I think if you're hung up there or if you have the misconception that you were going to put a book out and sell 5,000 copies and be wealthy, I don't think that you did enough homework. That's not what you're doing this for. You're doing this for the experience and the journey and to get better. And you're, it's one of those things that you may never be done with. You may always be learning and which is part of the, what I love about it. That, that's, yeah. Is, is just this continual learning and to watch myself 
growing and getting better virtually just by doing it has been one of the better parts of this. Every publisher we've talked to has said it takes about, if you stick with it and you stay with it, within your fourth to seventh book, you'll be making a living at least. The problem is, like you said, people stop. Oh, my first book stunk. My second book stunk. Look at Stephen King. He didn't make it till his fourth book. And his fourth book ended up being Carrie. And that ended up, that made everything go crazy for him. And he he exploded. But before then, the guy he wasn't, you know, wasn't selling much. He wasn't a big deal. And every author has those stories. So I think you're right. The best thing is to hone your craft and to, to market yourself and to network. Get with people that are marketing people. Get with people that are very in tune to the social media network to do different things, to try different things, and to get your name out there. And with that being said, a great follow is Jen at Twitter, especially, and you'll have all her links there, at JL Rothstein one and that's J-L-R-O-T-H-S-T-E-I-N-1, and that's on uh, Twitter, and you can find all her accounts there. Her blog is a great blog. She has a good Facebook page. She has her Instagram there, too. Her website is jrostein.com. I love it. I also check out all of her articles. I think her articles are very good. They're very realistic and they will touch you. They will literally, they, I, what I like them is they're real and they're relevant. A lot of people, oh, I saw a butterfly today and I like chocolate. Well, that's super, <laughs> but I want to know what are you going through today? I, how can I write when I have writer's block? How could I do this? And I think that's what I like. It's very inspirational. So Jen, we're so excited about your future. We think you have a monster future ahead. I think you're just touching the surface of your talent. It must be an exciting time for you. Yeah, this has just been great. This has been amazing. And, uh, and I, appreciate, I appreciate being able to come on here and, and to talk to such a large audience such as yours. This has just been one more great experience that I'm having out here. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I'll let Florence get the last word, but we really do like you. We like you off the air, but we root for you every day. I don't think there's a weekend we don't talk about you you. We just are very, very proud of you. You have done some great accomplishments. And I think you're like, again, you're just touching the surface and you're going to do an amazing, you're, you're going to have an amazing career. Just remember the little people like Florence and I, when you're, uh, when you're drinking Cristal with Stephen King. So just remember us. Florence, you get the last word. Yes. I just, I want to thank Jen for being on the forum. I am a huge fan of hers, not just of her amazing book, Atonement from the Heavens sent series. I am really looking forward to the second book as well, but I also love Jen's energy and I love your positivity. I just think that it's very rare to find someone who's so giving and so willing to help others. And that's something that from the first moment I, you know, got to know you on social media from that first time we DM'd each other, I thought this is a person I want on my team. This is a person that I knew when I told Jim about you that this would be somebody that we would absolutely love to work with. So not only are you an amazing writer, very talented, but also as a person. So I just want, again, to thank you so much. Everybody out there, please get this book. If you haven't gotten this book yet, five-star reviews. And again, it's just amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. And remember everyone, when you get the book, atonement please go to amazon and take yeah. two minutes to do a review and if you do that and you show me the review or you show florence the review i'm, I'm serious we will there are some companies and i'm not i'm gonna say it they pay us just to retweet one post so what we'll do is we'll put a post out for you if you have a book if you have a website if you have something else we'll do it we'll support you this is how much we believe in jen so please get those reviews up we would like and by the end of this month have 30 reviews that's what we want that's our goal is so let's get those reviews going and please support her take care everyone this will be up on tomorrow morning early morning and we'll also have the link to jen's youtube page go check that out too so it's great stuff thanks jen and take care everyone thank you bye bye thank you bye